Siamo a Firenze per un incontro di alto livello che ha fatto il punto sulle più moderne acquisizioni nella terapia dell'osteoporosi. Tanti gli interventi, i farmaci sono stati un po' al centro di tutto, in particolare si è parlato di quale possa essere la durata ottimale della terapia con i farmaci antiosteoporosi, in particolare con i bifosfonati. E su questo tema ha tenuto un'interessante relazione il professor Dennis Black, epidemiologo presso l'Università di California a San Francisco. E ne parliamo con lui per farci raccontare insomma, gli aspetti più significativi. Professor Black, um, which are the data regarding the long-term efficacy of a bifosfonate? Um, there are a lot of good clinical trial data suggesting that with one to five years of therapy, there are good reductions in the risk of hip fracture, spine fracture, and non-vertebral fractures for as long as five years. After five years, there are some data for alendronate and zolendronic acid suggesting that continuing beyond five years will continue to reduce vertebral fracture risk but that it won't affect non-vertebral fractures. So this suggests that for efficacy, the optimal patients to continue as long as 10 years would be those at high risk of vertebral fractures. Because after five years, uh, you reach a sort of steady state of the efficacy of these drugs, or not? Well, it's less, they're less beneficial beyond five years. I think that's the point. It's, it, 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 they're very clearly beneficial in terms of preventing vertebral fractures, but it's hard to show that they continue to reduce the risk of non-vertebral fracture con compared to discontinuing the drugs. And uh, uh, moving to the safety profile of these drugs, what do we know regarding the long-term safety, especially looking at the ONJ problem mm -hmm. and the atypical fracture? Yeah, I think we know a lot about the safety of these drugs. These are drugs that have been taken by millions of people around the world. Uh, they've been available for about 15 years now on the market, and I think we know the drugs are very safe. Uh, ONJ, osteonecrosis of the jaw, um, we know in osteoporosis patients is very, very rare, about one in 100,000. Atypical femur fractures are also very rare. Um, approximately for every 1,000 hip fractures that occur, we see between three and five atypical femur fractures. So they're also very rare. Um, the atypical femur fractures may have a moderate relationship to bisphosphonate use, particularly after five years, but it's a fairly mild relationship. So, uh, putting together safety and efficacy, what uh, we could tell to the general practitioner regarding the optimal duration of this therapy? Well, I think, uh, firstly, that I think the most important point is that these, these therapies are extremely efficacious over a period of approximately five years, and the risks are extremely low. The benefits strongly overwhelm the risks for up to five years. After five years, I think it's up to the individual patient to select out patients that continue to be at high risk of vertebral fractures, and those would be patients who will most likely benefit from continued therapy. Someone suggests a sort of holiday treatment, uh, which is your, after this five years uh, du uh, duration, yeah, I think, I which think is you your, your opinion? Yes, my, my opinion would be that after five years, you need to reevaluate the risk of vertebral fracture women or men who are at higher risk of vertebral fracture would be more likely to benefit from continued treatment. Um, I think there's one other point, which is that alendronate and zolendronic acid are, are unique in that once you stop them after using them for a while, there is an ongoing benefit. If you're considering resedronate or abandronate, the data suggests that there is no benefit once you stop them. So these are quite different even though they're all bisphosphonates.